Hi Disruptors, welcome back to our From Zero to Hero video series. As always, my name is Francisco and today we are going to talk about logic in OutSystems. If you notice this video is coming a bit later than we announced on our first calendar, it is because while we were preparing that one for you, we felt like we were giving you too much information in one video. So we decided to split it in two parts so it's easier for you to digest it. In this video, we will cover all logic related instances and in the next one, we will cover the logic flow and how to apply the concepts I will teach you here today to that flow. This will not affect the update we gave you, so blocks and events will come out on the last given date with part two of the logic coming in between. So let's dive right in and get started. If you check the logic tab in Service Studio, you will see a lot of information right off the bat. We have five main sections with one of these sections depending on the type of module you are in. These sections are the client actions and the service actions sections. In our video series, we will not cover the service actions in detail since we consider this to be a more advanced concept to apply while we are starting to work with OutSystem. Before we take a deep dive into each section, let's talk about variables, since they are essential to your logic. Variables are used to store information, to be referenced and manipulated in our logic. We have three different types of variables, input, output and local variables. Input variables are what your action receives and is sent by who is using or consuming this action. This can be mandatory or not. Local variables are used to perform our logic and manage the information inside our flow. This information is not stored after the logic ends and each time the logic runs, a new instance of this variable is created. Output variables are what we send to whoever is using or consuming the action. As a consumer, we will only view the input and output variables of an action. The local variables only exist in the action itself and are not visible to consumers. Our variables must always have a data type. What is a data type, you might ask? I got the answer for you. A data type is what your variable represents and what it can hold in terms of values. We can split data types in two, simple or composite data types. Simple data types are a single type of data, for example, we will have data type text when we want the variable to have a string, integer and long integer, we want to have only numbers and so on. There are several simple data types you can choose from in OutSystems. On this slide, you can find a list of simple data types and what they hold, so feel free to take a screenshot because it will definitely help you out later. Composite data types are a group of data types that can be set up using the structure section in the data tab of the service studio. The best way to describe this is if you want to aggregate several values into one single variable, a structure is the way to go. Now that we know what variables are, let's take a look at our logic sections. When we talk about logic, we will have logic that runs on the server side and logic that runs on the client side. Let's check our sections and explain what, what each one represents. First, we have the client action section. This is where we create our actions that run on the client side. You can use client actions in two ways, on screens or in the client logic. In this section, we want to create client actions that can be reused on several screens so you don't have to duplicate your code every time you need it. Then we move on to the server actions section. Server actions run logic on the server. In this section, you can create server actions and use them on other servers, server actions, data actions or client actions. We will cover data actions in a later video of the From Zero to Hero video series. For example, on server actions, since we are running logic on the server, this allows us to use aggregates to fetch information from the database something that direct client actions do not allow us to do natively. We also have the integration section. This is where we can consume or expose SOAP and REST services and consume SAP systems. This is one of the most important accelerators from OutSystems 
since OutSystems generates all the methods and data structures when consuming a service, giving us, the developers, a seamless experience when integrating them. So there are almost no visual differences in the application logic. If you're also exposing a service, you have integrated documentation, making it easier for the consumers of your API to have all the information available. Below integrations, we can see the role section. This is where we can configure all the roles that your application needs to have to restrict or allow end users to access specific parts and operations of your application. OutSystems by default has two system roles, anonymous and registered. This is the difference between someone who is authenticated or not via login. You always want to protect your application, so this is a key functionality you must use, really use it. Besides these two roles, you can also define your roles to manage your application. After you create your roles, you can check if the user has that role with functions that are built in or even apply the rule to your screen of not allowing someone without that specific role to access it. Last but not least, we have the exceptions section. An exception is triggered when something is disrupting or already disrupted the flow of your application. In OutSystems, we can handle these exceptions with raise exception and handle exception nodes in our flow. The most generic way to handle exceptions is with an all exceptions handler. This means it will process all exceptions that can occur in your action flow. You can use this handler if you want to treat your exceptions in any given scenario the same way. You have five subtypes of exceptions, user exceptions, database exceptions, security exceptions, communication exceptions, and last but not least, abort activity change exception. You can create your own exceptions in the user exception subtype, allowing you to handle certain exceptions the way you want them by raising that ex specific exception that you created on your flow. That is all for today's video. I hope you liked it. On the next video, we will go into more detail about the action flow before heading into blocks and events. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We are currently on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for all our updates and feel free to comment with any doubts because we are here to help you. Thank you for watching and see you soon.